This video has it all for IPv6. Public addresses, global address assignment, IPv6 subnetting, and how to pick addresses to use on your routers. Let's jump in and learn about global unicast addresses. In this video, we'll use four sections to take a systematic approach. We'll start by defining what a global unicast address is, but you'll discover that it has to do with this idea of unique addresses in the IP version 6 internet. So we'll talk about this idea of global routing prefixes that are the major block of addresses assigned to each company so that each company uses a unique set of addresses. Then we'll talk about how to subdivide those into useful sets of addresses for use in your network, that is subnetting for IP version 6, which is way simpler than with IP version 4. And then finally about addresses within those subnets, which is also straightforward, even though the addresses themselves are pretty long. Then if you'll stick around to the end, I'll give you that last bit of advice. For those of you using the books, I'll tell you what you need to look at in the book beyond what's here in the video. And for everybody, I'll tee up that review and study exercise as usual. Finally, I focus on two things these days, keeping the CCNA official cert guides updated as need be and building up this YouTube channel. And you can help with that second part. For instance, share this video. If you get something out of it, make sure and share it on your social media. Click the share button here at YouTube or share it wherever you hang out with people to talk about CCNA. I very much appreciate that. All right, let's jump in and talk about these GUAs, that is global unicast addresses. To set the context, we're talking about global unicast addresses or GUAs, and that's just one type of unicast address. There's also unique local addresses, EULAs, and you want to think of GUAs as public addresses in comparison to IPv4 and EULAs as private addresses. There are also link local addresses, but our goal in this video is to focus solely on GUAs, so I'll stop there with the context, other than to say there's multicast addresses as well, and we won't be talking about those, but those are some of the types there. So GUAs, unicast addresses. What are they? Well, these are addresses that most people use for IPv6. These follow the global assignment process using IANA's rules as implemented by regional internet registries and ISPs. So your company would be assigned a global routing prefix that is a block of unique IP version 6 addresses. Because those addresses are unique, those addresses as the destination address in a packet, they're routable over the internet. So your company can connect to the internet, not use NAT for IPv6, and send packets through the internet. So it's a beautiful thing. It's what most people do or most companies would do today for IPv6. Uh, IANA defines the range of addresses that fit into this. So just like with IPv4, some addresses were class A, some were class B, some were class C, some were multicast. For IP version 6, IANA defines that all hex numbers that begin with two or three in the very first hex digit are reserved for use for these global unicast addresses. For instance, Here's a hex IP version 6 address, unabbreviated. There's a 2. You should instantly think that's a GUA. All right. The abbreviation that represents this idea of all GUAs, as defined by IANA today, is this number 2000 colon colon slash 3. So what does that mean? Well, the slash 3 is the prefix length, which says all numbers that have the same first three bits of this number on the left. The number on the left is the prefix. And we know from our abbreviation rules that a number 2000 colon colon is 2000 with all the rest of the hex digits as zeros, all the rest of the 32 hex digits. So 2000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to the 32nd hex digit. But what's important are those first three bits. So what are the first three bits of hex two? Well, you can see that in our binary to hex conversion table, the first three bits are 0, 0, 1, as we see in this breakdown down below. Hex 2 is binary 0, 0, 1, 0. And there are only two hex digits, which when you view their binary equivalents, begin with 0, 0, 1. That's hex 2 and hex 3. So that's the interpretation of this abbreviation that says, hey, this is how we succinctly represent all addresses that begin with 2 or 3. 
All right, last thing, here's an example. Go address in binary. It's 128 bits long. The most important part, hey, it begins with that 001 up at the top, but mostly I care that you remember it begins with a hex two or three. So here's the hex version of that address, and there's the two at the beginning, so you should think that's a GUA. Now let's talk about the global internet and routing over that. So let's say your company was assigned this, quote, global routing prefix. That's the formal term that refers to this block of unique addresses that only your company can use. And this number with a prefix length of 48 means your numbers will all begin with the same value in their first 48 bits. By the way, 48 bits is the same length as 12 hex digits. In other words, all your addresses begin with these 12 hex digits, and no one else in the world should use addresses that begin with those 12 hex digits. That's the idea. For instance, for companies connected to the internet, say your company is company one, and there's that same prefix we showed on the previous page, you can use any addresses in that range. Then some other company would get a prefix that's a little different, all its addresses begin 2001 dogbaker 82222 A third company gets addresses with 3333 in that third quartet. The next company gets one with 4444. They're unique compared to every other company that connects to the internet in the world. That's a great thing. The routing in the internet works well because the routers in the internet, they can have routes that point to those individual companies for the entire address block, for the entire global routing prefix. The administrative process works just like it did in the old days with IP version 4 in that IANA owns the process. They have the regional registries do the work across the globe, over five broad geographies across the globe. And those RIRs also work with ISPs. So your company could get their assignment directly from an RIR or they might get their assignment from an ISP that they're working with. Now let's talk about breaking down your global routing prefix inside the enterprise. So on the right, we have the internet. The routers there will have a route, one route for your entire global routing prefix, like router IP1 has this route pointing over to your router, router C, as the entry point into your network. But of course, your network has lots of routers and lots of individual links, and you're going to need an IP version 6 subnet for each of these links but you're starting with a global routing prefix in this example of 2001 colon dogbaker 8 colon 1 colon colon slash 48. All right, a little bit different prefix than the previous example, by the way. So how do we subdivide that block of addresses to create subnets? So a couple of terms. Formally, in IPv6, we call these subnets prefix IDs. So the number is the prefix ID. The concept is a prefix. Of course, people call them subnets and subnet IDs in practice. In fact, some show command output even uses the term subnet. So informally, you can use all these terms interchangeably. Structure-wise, though, all your addresses still begin with some number of bits per your global routing prefix as defined by an RIR. The dividing line, though, for all your subnets, basically your subnet mask equivalent, all your deployed subnets, this dividing line will be at the 64-bit mark. So let's ex explore those rules here for just a moment. So check out these rules. All the prefixes begin with the global routing prefix, but all our deployed subnets will use a slash 64 prefix length. So what that does is between the length of your global routing prefix and slash 64, there's a space for a subnet field. So whatever unique values fit in here, those identify unique subnets, unique subnet IDs. Then the interface ID, which is the entire second half of the number, those are all zeros. For example, you could have a global routing prefix of this, 2001 colon 0 dogbaker 8 colon 0001. That's a 48 length in this example. That is 12 hex digits. Doesn't have to be, it just is in this example. And maybe your subnet field is 4321, and that brings us to the slash 64 mark, and the rest of the number is all zeros, and that would be the literal prefix ID for one subnet of this global routing prefix. For another, same global routing prefix, some other unique value in the next four hex digits, next 16 bits, to get us to the 64-bit mark, and then all zeros over here 
on the bottom right to complete the prefix ID. So if you made a planning chart like this, you could just start with that global routing prefix, identify the subnet ID field and see we're counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Abel Baker. And you could imagine with four hex digits, that's 16 bits, 2 to the 16th is 65,000 and change. So you're not going to write all these down, right? You're going to have a concept of it. You're going to have an IP address management tool to help you manage these. But you can think about how you'll do address planning and subnet planning and say, hey, these are literally the subnet IDs, the prefix IDs that I can choose from. Then similar to how you would have done with IP version 4, you turn around and look at your network topology and say, hey, where do I need subnets? Well, each the rules are the same. Each LAN that's separated from each other by a router, I'm going to need a different subnet, a different prefix. So here we've got a subnet, here a subnet, so on. So six LAN subnets on the left, three LAN subnets in the middle. They each have a unique value in the subnet ID portion of the structure and all with the same first 12 hex digits because they all have to do that to follow the GUA addressing rules. Now that you understand subnetting, working with addresses is pretty easy. So if you start with a plan with any subnet ID or prefix ID, remember the interface ID, that's that second half of the address, has 16 hex zeros. To create a new address in the subnet, you just need to pick any otherwise unused 16 hex digit value for the interface ID and you're good to go. Now, End user devices are typically going to dynamically learn their addresses to use, but for routers, you're going to pick them. So say you've got this planning diagram with some routers in there, and you need to pick the IP version 6 addresses to use. You could, for instance, pick these addresses for router R1 and router R3. So if you look around at those, they've got the same first 16 hex digits as in the previous planning diagram, but something unique now in the interface ID. Two of these addresses have nice numbers that are long to see that are that there's no way to abbreviate them because there are no zeros. This one on the WAN link, there are a bunch of zeros. In fact, this interface ID is 15 zeros and a one. So it can be greatly abbreviated. Now, from a day-to-day -day perspective, which would you rather work with? These big, long numbers or this nice short number? Well, most people would want to work with a shorter number, of course. So most people come up with a numbering plan for their IP version 6 addresses on routers. Maybe you use some numbering plan you already have for your routers, or maybe you make one up, where the interface IDs have lots of zeros in them, so they can be abbreviated a lot, and it's just easier to work with. Like here, R1, the interface IDs are 15 zeros and a 1. Router R3, it's 15 zeros and a 3. That's very convenient for working in a lab, for instance. All right, last thing here, by the way, if you're starting with some IP version 6 address and you want to figure out the prefix ID, it's pretty simple. All of your prefixes will have a 64-bit prefix length. So you that's the that's the midpoint of the address. So just change everything to the right of the midpoint, the 16 digits that end the number, change them all to zeros, and now you've got the prefix ID way simpler than when doing subnetting math with IP version 4. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Let me talk to you about the book for a moment. If you're following the book, you should be at volume 1, chapter 26, section 1. And if you watch this whole video, that's pretty comprehensive to that section. It's always good to read the section, but if you wanted to pick up some time and skip it, you could get away with it. You've seen all the content here in this video. For further study and review, I've got an ad hoc lab. That means all the lab is in a video. It's linked up above. It's linked in the description. So what you do is turn up the video, watch the lab intro, then pause and do the lab in Cisco Packet Tracer, and then finish watching the lab if you want to review and have any questions about what you saw. For this lab, I'm going to give you a design with subnets and the specific IP addresses I would like for you to use. And although I haven't taught you in sequence how to configure those addresses yet, it's really simple. The command is IPv6 space address space, and then the address and the prefix links with no spaces in it. 
you'll see how to do it in lab. And it's a great way to just start getting familiar with this idea of addresses and prefixes in the output of Cisco IOS commands. Thanks for spending time with me. If you're new and you like the video, make sure and subscribe and click the bell so you'll hear about new ones for everybody. Give me a like if you like the video. It's always appreciated. Talk to you soon.